Would you like a room? <gasps> I'm so sorry. I probably shouldn't scare people like that. <laughs> Gregory Horror Show was a series of CGI animated shorts from Japan created by Naomi Iwata. Set in an otherworldly... um... W world, the general premise of the show revolves around a hotel and its many unusual inhabitants. Wayward souls find themselves drawn to this place, and its caretaker, the titular Gregory, is always ready to accommodate a new guest for an extended stay. While the unusual papercraft design of the characters and the cartoonish antics present a veneer of lightheartedness, Gregory Horror Show can live up to its name when it wants to. The stories of the show usually deal with one's feelings of loss or unfulfillment, which ultimately leads a person to Gregory House. Once there, the world and its inhabitants start to break down the new guest psyche with the intention of making sure they never leave. Some of the more benevolent characters might try to aid the guest in escaping this world and returning back to their reality, but, well, things are never quite that simple, are they? The series ran for roughly four years with over 80 episodes and gained enough attention that it even ended up released overseas. Licensed by Genion, all of the episodes were translated and dubbed and released in North America across three DVDs in late 2004. And this is one of those instances where I actually prefer the dub to the original. Maybe it's because I heard the English dub first, but I feel like the performances there give a bit more life and personality to the characters. Meanwhile, Back in Japan, the show had spawned merchandise such as collectible figurines, phone charms, a guidebook, a papercraft book, and even a video game. Capcom would take the license and make a game based off it for the PlayStation 2, and this also would get an overseas localization. However, only in Europe, strangely enough. Apparently, there were plans for a North American release, but for whatever reason, those plans were scrapped. The game's dub actually uses American voice actors, including some that would end up returning for the North American DVDs of the show. Anyway, the game is quite faithful to the source material, almost feeling like another season of the show. You're a new guest at Gregory House, but you don't want to be, so you gotta find a way out. You get to roam around the hotel and interact with a number of characters taken directly from the show, and just like in the show, the whole experience is weird and unsettling and chips away at your character's sanity, so you gotta escape before you find yourself trapped forever. Death shows up and offers you a deal. Help find and return lost souls to him and he'll help you escape. Now, the problem here is that the souls are currently in the possession of other guests, and many of them don't want to let you take those souls away, so you'll need to use a combination of stealth and puzzle solving to achieve your goals. But once you do, well, let's just say you're not making many new friends during your stay at the hotel. So things become increasingly hostile as you piss off more and more people, creating a very tense situation. Reminds me of my last job. Ha <laughs> ha jokes. But no, seriously, things are going to get really stressful when we have multiple characters all chasing us around the hotel trying to kill us. I don't care how silly the game looks, getting chased by things in games is something I hate. So that's going to be fun for me. Now, some of you may recall I have a history with this game. Many, many years ago, I discovered it and attempted to do a playthrough but there were some complications. You see, like many consoles at the time, the PlayStation 2 was designed to only run a game if the system and game were both from the same region, meaning this European PS2 game wouldn't just work on my American PS2. Now, there were a handful of different methods out there that could bypass this issue, and I went for the cheapest, least invasive option. The Swap Magic was a disc designed to trick your system into running games that it normally wouldn't. You'd put it in, 
and it would boot up to a special program that circumvented the various checks the system would usually make. From there, you'd then switch the disc out for the one you'd want to play. Of course, the problem with all of this is that it relies on the PS2 initially reading the Swap Magic disc, itself being the kind of thing the system checks would prevent from running. So I often found myself having to try several times over before I could get the dang thing to work properly, and each time I wanted to play the game it would be a whole thing all over again. Then it would get to the point where the disc would just stop working no matter how many times I tried it, so I'd need to spend money on a replacement, and suddenly the cheapest option was turning out to be not so cheap. With the frustrations mounting, I decided it would be best to just throw in the towel, and move on. Thankfully, over the years, emulation of PS2 games on the PC has only gotten better, and we're now at a point where this game runs on PCSX2 without any issues, so I think it's about time I give this game another shot, and hopefully make it farther than I did last time. Maybe even make it to the end. Something else that's happened over the years... My memories for this game have faded away. That's right, folks. You don't gotta worry about me actually knowing what to do or anything. We're gonna fumble our way through to victory. Now, I'm not gonna be totally clueless here. I'm sure my memory will be jogged here and there, at least for the parts I actually played before. And I'm also more familiar with the show and characters now, and I think that will help me along the way too. So let's get our revenge and finally get out of this dang house already.